It's Jonathan Reeves here from Innovator Vectorwitz BIM. I'm going to take a look at the part two of the new features of Vectorwitz 20. I hope you enjoyed my first video if you've seen it. Um, it's proving quite popular so please check that out for the first batch of features. But let's get into this. Um, just before we do I'd like to just show you a quick look around my website. I'd love you to kind of have a quick look around. Um, there's loads of information here including some free chapters of my innovative Vectorwitz BIM book. And also, if you go onto uh, the software page, a lot more information about the Vectorwitz 20. Um, got a bit more information, including some brochures there you can download. And if you go onto my news page, there's some brilliant um, little articles about news, any kind of updates to Vectorworks, and also a bit on Twin Motion as well. So please check that out, and I look forward to seeing you in the video. Bye bye. So, for the first new feature, I'm going to open up uh, one of my project files and uh, let's go for this one, Station Road. And um, this is a project that I featured before. Now, when you open the file, you will see a really nice little uh, new feature is the update in the progress bar. So that was quite rapid, but you see, you get a lot more information about how the file opens. Um, so I'm just gonna skim through a few pages of the project here, just so you can get a bit of an idea of the project before I go on to the new feature. So you can see it's quite a complex project for a new extension. Um, a very large one in fact, we're almost doubling the size of the house. I'm just kind of flicking through some of the drawings um, using the command and the upper, up and down arrow keys. And you can see I can kind of scroll through the proposed drawings. Um, let's just turn off the black and white, they look kind of cool on white. A uh, bit different on the black screen. So all of those are the existing and then we come on to the proposed. And you can see um, there's quite a lot of information in the one file. So I'm definitely using um, a BIM approach for this particular project. And you can see that by the 3D models here and the exploded. Anyway, let's get on to the new features. So when I click onto my sheets, there's quite a few of them. Now normally, if you were to edit the uh, layers, you would have to select it, right click, click edit, go in, change the um, letter or the sheet title, and then click OK. Now that's going into a dialogue and out of one. And that took quite a while. But now what you notice is you can just hover over, immediately go in and type. Now that's really cool. Now this list browser editing works everywhere. And a really nice little sweet thing is if you click onto the icon, uh, you can see that it just kind of glows. And as soon as you click, you're available. So I could call this location plan 1, 2, 12, 50, for example. So that's really cool. Um, you'll notice that if we go to the layers, when we go to the organisation dialog, we can do similar things. Let's just pop that open. Um, so here we are in the organisational dialog, and we might be looking at editing some class names. So again, we can click on them. If we want to, we can click on the pencil. We can immediately highlight those and change the class names without having to right click or double click to go into the dialog to do the editing, then come back out. So it just is a lot, lot faster. This list browser editing is available pretty much everywhere in the program, wherever there's some kind of list. So that's a fantastic new feature, and I know that that will speed up my workflow absolutely no end, and just kind of make everything really fluid and really, really nice um, as I'm working away. So I hope you like that new feature. Um, I hope you were interested in the project. If you are, I've got a whole dedicated video on this particular project showing the entire approach to my BIM modeling. So please check out that video, you'll find it on the channel. Okay, so the next really, really cool feature, very similar in some ways to list browser editing and the direct speed of workflow that you're gonna gain from that. It's actually under the organization or tools menu, um, under batch rename. So when we click batch rename, this is really cool. Basically, you'll see all the existing classes in the file. Then you have a new column um, called new name. And basically what you can do is you can select your classes, layers, sheets, viewports, pretty much anything in the file and simply batch rename them. So rather than having to go through one by one, if I want to name all my classes with a prefix, I can just type A for architect hyphen and apply the changes. Now you can see it's done those changes. I can now carry on within the dialog. Maybe I want to look at my sheets here. Um, so maybe I would like to put in a job number in front of those. So let's put in a um, made up job number, 1034 hyphen PR hyphen. 
And you can see it's immediately prefixed all of my sheets. Again, I can apply those changes if I would like, and I'll click OK. So let's kind of go out of the dialog for a second. Now you can see all the classes are all prefixed with A for architect and then hyphen. And that is really, really a rapid way for me to modify and batch rename everything. If we have a quick look at the sheet layers, again, you can see they're now all prefixed with that particular job number. So what a feature. I mean, the, the fact that you can actually batch rename um, using not only um, every single thing in the drawing, okay, so if I wanted to, I could batch rename all the symbols, and I could just call them, um, let's call them 21, because it's 21 Station Road, hyphen, just so I know that all of those symbols will belong to this particular project. I'll pop my resources palette open, and there we go. So you can see all of the names have been prefixed with 21. Now that would mean if I wanted to, if I was looking in another project and I wanted to find some particular class, I could just find 20, type in 21, search, and it would just find all the details that I used in that particular project, as well as a bunch of other stuff as well. Um, so that's a nice new feature. I'm very, very impressed by the battery name. And the fact is you can do a whole bunch of things with it we haven't even thought about, like change title caps as well. So it's going to save a lot of time. So let's carry on with our new features. So for the next one, I'm just going to kind of show you the ground floor of the model. Um, let's have a quick look into 3D. And I'm just going to turn off the clip cube for a second. I'm just going to show you the other layers and then we'll have a look at this together. So let me turn on the ground floor, the first floor, second floor and the roof. Just so you can get a bit of an idea of this particular project. <clears throat> and we'll give it a little spin around. Um, you can see quite a complex model of an entire project all in one file. Okay, so here is the new feature. So when I click onto um, one of my doors, for example, it's a really simple, nice new feature. We have widgets. So basically, in the object info palette previously, there was a lot of information. Over the years, you know, more and more information has crept into here. So what you can find is now, these little widgets are available for you to kind of hide. And this is great because you can basically just open up the bit that you're, what you're looking for. And um, particularly if you're kind of a bit deeper in, you're focusing on say the jam, you don't have to scroll up and down within that dialogue as much. And that's a really cool new feature. Now, a couple of little tips here. If we hold down the Alt key and click, all of them will open. Hold down the Alt key and click again, everything will close. So that's a really nice way just for you to kind of locate very rapidly what you're looking for. And in my mind, this will save you having to perhaps go into the bigger dialogue, the settings, um, which often, you know, can take a moment longer. And you can see that's opened up now. And I can search through to get to everything I need to. But, you know, it's into a dialogue and then out of one again. So in many ways, it's similar to the theme of list browser editing and batch renaming. It's all about speeding up your workflow of what you currently do. And I think it's a very, very nice new feature. Looking. So continuing the theme of improving your workflows, the next new feature is about when we come to publish drawings or exchange PDF files. It's called Optimize PDF. Basically now, PDFs generated by Vectorworks will reduce in size in a similar way to maybe Adobe Acrobat does. Um, so if we go to have a look at file export, Vectorworks Architect in the industry series always had PDF export, but do bear in mind um, that is omitted from fundamentals. So you can only sort of print. Here's the nice new dialogue, nice big black new dialogue in Mojave, looking good. And we can basically click on some of the different settings. We've got no quality, no um, compression, low compression. And you can see it's down sampling the images. And it's just coming up with some defaults essentially. So you can play around with these settings. You can still adjust them as required. Um, but I'm gonna go for maximum and lowest quality. Click export, and let's just save that to my desktop. Let's click save. And we'll wait a few moments, hopefully while that generates. So there is the PDF, that's pretty rapid. Again, quality not fantastic, but if we have a look at it, it's only 237K. So that's pretty neat. Um, now, I think you will also notice, if we go back to Vectorworks, we can go to publish. So if we go to the publish command, essentially, um, we can set a batch of drawings. So I've got a whole bunch of drawings in this file. Let's just select a few of those and send them across for publishing. 
and we can select them all and we can click options and again the same dialogue pops up. So we have batch editing control over a whole batch of images at the same time or if I want one specific one to have a higher quality or lower quality I can kind of do that. So it's really, really cool. And when I'm ready to publish, we click OK. Um, I won't say to set there. And again, let's do that to the desktop. We'll just overwrite that other one. That'll take a moment or two to generate because there's a multiple bunch of PDFs there and some of them were 3D uh, rendering. So here we go. So we've got the front cover. Actually, some of those were 2D drawings. So you can see quite rapid. Let's have a quick look at the size. And it's only 2.1 megabytes. So it's easy enough to email. So I really hope you've enjoyed that new feature. Um, this is, again, a very, very important workflow feature that I think you'll find extremely helpful. And it means another bit of software that you don't have to use. You don't have to use Adobe Acrobat, or maybe if you're using online, I use small PDF currently. They both work very well, but it's always another process. Um, you know, just be lovely to be able to do that direct in Vectorworks from now on. So for my final feature of this particular video, we're going to talk about a level of detail. Now, Vectorworks has always had level of detail functionality. And basically, if you click on the rulers, if we change the lead detail to 1 to 100, for example, and click OK, you'll see that because I've got my level of detail setting on low, activated by this button up here, I can essentially turn on or off the detail. However, you will notice now that we've got a much simpler level of detail than we had before. So if I go to 1 to 100, I've got very low detail. If I go to 1 to 50, you'll see I've got the next level of detail. And then when we go below 1 to 25, let's say 1 to 20, I have even more detail. For example, the glass is drawn in there. Um, I don't know whether you can see that, but let's just go back to 1 to 50, no glass. And then the next level of detail, anything below 1 to 50, there we go. Now, that's pretty easy to set up, as I say. You can do that by right-clicking and go to Document Preferences and then adjusting the auto-display detail levels for your design layers. So what this really means is any time I'm a 1 to 100 scale or above, I get low detail. And medium displays, um, anything below 1 to 25, anything else is going to give me a high level of detail. So that's really cool in the design layer. Let's have a quick look how this plays out in the sheets. So here's some pre-made sheets. I'm just going to go ahead and select those and update them after the changes I've just made. Here we can see the viewport set 1 to 50 scale, but I can simply change the level of detail on the fly, medium or high. Let's put that back to low so you can compare the two. So, you know, when you're doing sort of big urban designs, this would be enough detail, almost like you would draw with a pencil um, at maybe 1 to 100 or 200. Then we've got the next level of detail here without sort of worrying too much about the glass and things like that. Um, and then as we go in a bit further, you can see we've got the glass line, we've got all the detail. Now this also works really nicely in 3D. So here's a low detail representation. In this particular one, I actually told it to turn off the, um, the lintels and the sills. So here we can see a little bit more detail showing the direction of the door openings. And then finally, the high level of detail um, in this particular example, I told the high level of detail to show kick plates and obviously the mullions for the windows. So I've just popped about to the design layer and show you how that works. So when we kind of click on to the various items, if we double click, you'll notice that the dialog opens up the settings dialog and under general, firstly, we have detail added as an option here. So we can kind of preview low, medium, or high level of detail as we go, which is pretty cool. And we can do the same over here on the 2D plan, change the level of detail there. And you will notice that detail comes up as various options. Um, so for example, when I get down to 3D visualization, here we have some options in the 3D level of detail. I cannot show the mountains in low or medium, but only show them in high. Um, and I just show the trim in medium and high, for example. So look out for these new settings for level of detail. They will appear in various little places. Um, so I really hope you know, you'll enjoy that feature. I think you'll see the new dialogue, by the way, looks fantastic, particularly in dark mode. I love this. But the level of detail function is a very nice new function. And again, it's another automated feature that we can easily just take advantage of. 
just by setting that up in our document to go from sort of planning drawings through to you know building regs drawings within a click or two. Okay everybody, well I've really enjoyed making this second part two of the top 10 VectorWorks 20 features and I'll be looking forward to making a few more videos shortly. I'm just really kind of going out with my brochure here. So please visit my website if you're interested in the architecture that I do or the VectorWorks training that I can offer. Um, I do Skype training with people all over the world and basically I'd love to work with you. So yeah, please get in touch. I look forward to hearing the comments and any suggestions for some next videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.